Hi and welcome to this video on chord pads. So chord pads have been around for a couple of versions of Cubase now and they are available at the bottom of the screen so I think quite a few people will be seeing them more now because you generally in Cubase 9 you've got this uh, lower zone being opened for things like editor and the mix control and obviously sampler tracks but chord pads have been around in a prototypical version of that for a while. Uh, we're just going to run through uh, some of the features of them so just the the setup i'm using is nothing special we've just got halion sonic se on a piano preset uh, with a midi track so this will work with any midi instrument so basically this is a way of creating midi information uh, a little more easily for many people in terms of your keyboard skills than may otherwise be the case and also it can open up some useful creative possibilities for you so the chord pad section is as its name supplies, um, implies, is a pad which plays a chord. So you can see here we've got the default, so we've got fairly standard harmonized major scale here and some seven chords which we will come to in a minute. Uh, and it generates those chords. As you can see at the bottom of each one we've got a graphic sort of layout of where the notes are going to be and as you will see they change or can change depending on the way uh, things are set up but quickly um, you can set them up as you can see here from my transport bar I've got the uh, keyboard on the computer acting as a MIDI keyboard now if you don't know how to do that that's alt K to turn that on and off um, you need to be aware of this because if you leave it turned on nearly all your other keyboard shortcuts cease to function so uh, make sure you turn it off after you finished and if you want to change octaves as you will need to do to get this to work you use the cursor left and right key so we're going to be there which then means that my Q key will now activate that pad there and it's taking the MIDI input that I put in and turning it into a chord so if I record from there we will get something like this and I'm just doing this just on the computer keyboard to show you there's nothing fancy going on anywhere else I'm not playing anything else anywhere so fairly straightforward a chord progression which while it's obviously mostly in the key of C with the exception of E7 would be reasonably easy to play but for many people including myself probably be at the limit of uh, keyboard skills whereas just playing one at a time and it effectively harmonizing for you uh, is really useful so that's just generated fairly standard mini the MIDI there'd be no way to know whether that was generated on keypads or not so we can see there you've got the uh, the MIDI as easy as that now if we just move that out of the way we'll go back to the chord pad section here so take you on a quick tour of it uh, you've probably already got the idea so the first thing is I've got remote control turned on so that's why we've got this blue uh, octave here so that means that playing on an external MIDI keyboard or the virtual keyboard will allow you to control it now you can of course control it by clicking on the pads on screen but that's going to be far less uh, easy to get anything musical out of because moving around with a mouse is not the optimum way of making music. Um, you can change quite a lot about the way that these pads work. So this here changes the voicing. So you can see that the, the notes are changing. So we're getting different voicings of the chords like you're a really good keyboard player and you know all the right uh, voicings to play but what you may notice as well is the others are sometimes responding to that as well because they're trying to make it smooth so that when you play the next chord it will fit nicely again much like a good keyboard player would do you can also change the chord which is actually on the pad with this bottom as it says tensions here so we can add in ninth sixth etc so again if you're not sure of your chord spellings you can put them in and get something interesting and also finding voicings of these can be a, a, a long-winded process of trial and error in many cases where you've got this so finding those nice notes in there can be much easier and this will apply some intelligence to it um, if you click here you get the editor and you can just pick the chord that you want so you can say all right we'll turn all those off and we'll just go back to plain old C major so you've got the uh, a chord 
uh, the basic flavor any tensions here but also you can change the root note here so let's say you decided you want c over e so now this is c over e here which can be useful for that and maybe you could program some of these others to be you know maybe this would be just c and then you could have c over e here etc and you can get some real control and effectively gain instant keyboard skills uh, by doing that um here if you right click you can see we've got av here and that means adaptive voicing and that's where the preceding chord will change the voicing so you can see like if we look at the e minor there it's changing depending on which chord is coming before it so there it's going down there it's more up etc so they move around to uh, voice adaptively but if there's a particular voicing you like let's say you really like that b7 voicing you can just turn adaptive voicings off and then that won't change regardless of what happens around it we can see that's we're still sticking with that voicing or you can turn it back on you can lock it completely so none of the buttons appear so you can't accidentally change anything uh, there are ways to change it via uh, midi and so on but we're not going to look at that this is just an introduction to them but one of the things which is really nice about this is there's been some time taken to set up some nice chord pad presets and obviously you can save yours as well but there are a uh, load of them some of which are fairly descriptive so you know major scale in given keys and minor scales in given keys etc uh, but there are also perhaps less common things so like if you're having trouble ha um, harmonizing your harmonic minor scale you can look at that and find out what chords should fit in there minor triads etc and there's some nice like pleasing rock and pop chords number one so if we load that up we've got some song startery kind of yeah i'm a few minutes playing around with many of these you would come up with something uh interesting you like favorite pop chords i've got a couple of etc so there's there's loads to play around with here i'm sure finding almost any of these you will find something you think oh yeah that's a great idea i can start a song with this so this is this is one of those tools which can be really inspirational and take you in directions uh, you may not have been before so that's a basic overview of chord pads <laughs>